Hi, this is Dr. Ramin Tayani from the Tayani Institute. I'm an ophthalmologist and oculoplastic surgeon. Uh, today I'm going to talk about something that's not uh, very pleasant, however it needs to be done in times. It's uh, when do we need to remove an eye? Uh, removal of an eye, there are three types of procedures. We can do an enucleation, evisceration, or an exeneration. There are different reasons why we would do when any or all of any one of those three procedures. The typical scenario is a blind, painful eye. Now, what is the cause of the blind, painful eye? Could be from bad diabetes, could be from severe glaucoma, could be from an intraocular tumor, a, a cancer that's grown inside the eye or within the orbit. Uh, severe infections. Those kind of scenarios, unfortunately, at times, we're better off removing the eye than to leaving it in. So, just quickly, exoneration is very uncommon. That's really reserved for patients who have severe cancer or infection that's surrounding the whole uh, around the eye eyelid orbit. That's when we remove everything from the skin, the eyelids, the soft tissue, the fat, the muscles, the eyeball, everything, and then obviously a prosthetic will be worn. So that's all I'm going to say about exoneration because it's extremely uncommon. The other uh, extreme is evisceration, which is the most common form of removal of the eye. And in an, in an evisceration, we can do that in almost all scenarios with the exception of if there is a tumor inside the eye or a severe infection inside the eye. In those scenarios, we would then go to an enucleation of the eye. So the difference between an evisceration and enucleation is, evisceration is when we remove the inside contents of the eye, so we save the white of the eye, the muscles of the eye, and we remove the inside, the contents, we put an implant, and go from there. Whereas an enucleation is when we separate the muscles of the eyeball, there are six of them, from the eyeball and remove the eyeball in full by removing it from the nerve and the muscles, remove the whole eyeball in one piece. So again, that's usually saved for scenarios where there is a, a tumor in the eye, a cancer, and or a severe infection in the eye. So now, once the eye is removed, we don't want to have a hollowness into the orbit, so we put in a ball, a different type of uh, ball. We can have a silicone ball or a, um, uh, a, a product called MedPore, which is some kind of, it's like a coral of the sea. It has pores, so vasculature can grow into it, so it becomes one and prevent it from uh, extrusion, remove, uh, you know, from it uh, coming out, or also less chance of infection. Um, in those scenarios, we put the implant in, we close up the soft tissue over the eye, and close the eye over a conformer. A conformer is a plastic piece that we put on the eyeball, or now the implanted uh, sphere, underneath the eyelid to keep the fornices. The fornices, the, sep the, the, the space between the inside of the upper lid, where it goes up into the uh, top of the uh, um, um, uh, eyeball, and then onto the eyeball itself, or on the lower lid, from the inside of the lower lid, curves in, and it keeps the eyelid from contracting down. That conformer stays on for six weeks. The eyelid is closed together. The upper and lower lids are closed on to each other for about three to six weeks, at which time, when that's opened, we send the patient to an ocularist. An ocularist is an expert who helps design mold and, and shape and color and paint and uh, create a prosthetic eye, which then goes over the implant that we've put placed over the eye. That's usually done about six to eight weeks after the initial surgery and um, the mold and the uh, prosthetic is created. Once that's uh, created and worn, uh, the idea is that we would be able to match the other eye so there's less um, chance of noticing that the eye is a glass eye. In some patients, surgery is done so well, the ocularis is done so well, that it's hard to tell that that's actually um, a non-seeing eye. 
Our goal when we remove the eye, of course, from a functional standpoint, if it's a cancer infection, is to remove that. Uh, if, it's, if it's from a trauma or a situation that needs to be removed, uh, is to also give you the best cosmetic result with the most best movement. In an evisceration, we're better chance, we have better chances of uh, good movement. In, um, in an enucleation, even though we separate all the muscles, we reattach four of those muscles back onto the, the prosthesis that we put into the eye. So unfortunately, that is, again, it's a procedure that needs to be done in some scenarios. We never look forward to doing this procedure, but if needed, uh, it is something that we do as an oculoplastic surgeon. Uh, this is one of the things that we do, and uh, we try to make it uh, both as, uh, as good of a functional and cosmetic result. The post-op course for this type of procedure is that the eye is patched, usually for about a week. After a week, the patch is removed and the eyelid is sewn together, closed for another three weeks. And after that is opened up, then you see the ocularis about two to three weeks after that. Um, there is an ointment and some drops to be used. Uh, we always encourage artificial tears um, postoperatively. And uh, there is pain to be expected for usually one to two days, uh, sometimes less than before surgery because most of the patients who come in for this procedure already have a lot of pain. Um, but in some cases, the pain is more. Pretty much covers it. This is Dr. Ramin Tayani from the Tayani Institute. Thank you for watching. Till next time.